Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nick and this is Astro Exploring. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how I stay interested in astrophotography when it feels like there is a never-ending band of clouds moving overhead. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the bell notifications so that you never miss another upload. Also, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you've got any different tips to the ones that I mentioned in this video about how you stay interested in astrophotography when it's cloudy, then leave a comment down below. Okay, so I put this story out on my Instagram a few days ago asking you guys what you do to stay interested in astrophotography when it is cloudy. And I got quite a few responses, so I'm gonna go through them in this video. So I'll start with one of the things that I always like to do when it's cloudy to stay interested in astrophotography, and that is to search the web and start adding things to my basket that I simply can't afford. Don't know why I do it, it keeps me, keeps me interested, keeps me dreaming about what I might be doing in a couple of years time when I do have a bit more money for equipment. Hey Sarah, do we have five grand to spare? And the first response I got was from Emil78, and he says that he watches YouTube videos and scours Stellarium and the web in search of inspiration. And I wholeheartedly agree with that. It is never too early to start planning for your next session, and Stellarium is a great tool to do that. There are other um, bits of software that you can also use, uh, and there are also plenty of books out there as well. But this is something that I do myself. I'm always prepared for my next imaging session. So even if it might be three or four weeks away, I will already know well in advance before I start setting up my equipment what I'm going to be imaging that night. And it just saves me time after I've set up where I can just slew straight to my target and start imaging straight away without thinking about what it is that I might want to image. So uh, planning ahead is, is always a great thing to do. The next response that I got is from M. Wilson Astrophotography. Michael says that he practices editing techniques on data that he has already captured and yeah I think again this is something that I think we all do um, as we edit more photos and collect more data and get more used to using uh, Photoshop or whatever your image processing software of choice is you know, I'm always continually striving to improve on my previous image and I think that when I'm learning new techniques I, I'll start to go back to my old images to see if I can make them look any better than they already did. Um, and then I'll post some comparisons. And, uh, and that's how you improve in the hobby, is just playing around with data that you've already captured. The next response that I got, and this is probably my absolute favorite of them all because it is so wonderfully simple that I hadn't even thought about it myself. And this one comes from Scott D Photos. And Scott says that he just likes to do another type of photography like macro. And I think that's absolutely brilliant. I think a lot of astrophotographers are generally keen photographers anyway. For me, astrophotography always comes first. So I think I'm guilty if we've had a few clear nights in a row, I'll dedicate all of that time to astrophotography and completely forget any other type of photography. I can hear some panting at my door. <laughs> hello what are you doing hmm? hello and here is another one that i absolutely love this one is from jake lancaster and he says that he likes to contribute to open source software which i think is absolutely brilliant i love free software i love playing around with new software learning different ways of doing things. Uh, I mentioned Astroberry and Astrophotography tool in my latest video. There's loads of other software out there that I would also love to try. I just haven't had the time. And so I think Jake's doing a, a really admirable thing there. So uh, thank you for doing that. The next response I got is from Astro Ed. And Thomas likes to chase storms and film the rain and lightning. Um, but when it's only cloudy, he catches up on his honey to-do list, which I assume he means that is uh, his to-do list that his wife has given him him. And I think we've all got one of those. After I finished filming this video, I've actually promised the wife that I would do some DIY. Um, so I'm hoping that I can just stretch this video out as long as possible um, while filming so that um, I don't have to do that. And Thomas has actually got an astrophotography YouTube channel of his own, so you should definitely go and check that out. It's well worth it. Next response I got is from Astro Crab. Astro Crab likes to watch YouTube videos to learn how to improve. And that's something that I've been doing recently, actually. So you'll... If you saw my last video, and if you didn't, I'll put a link to it in the description down below. In my last video, I talked about where I want to go with this channel over the next few months, uh, and I mentioned auto-guiding. And as I've never auto-guided before, I thought I would just download the software. So I've downloaded PHD2, I've just been having a look at it. Um, I haven't got the equipment, so I can't actually practice uh, connecting the equipment or anything like that, but just getting familiar with the software, just having a look around and watching some YouTube videos uh, on how it works and how I'm going to set it all up so that when I do finally get my kit and start auto guiding, hopefully I won't get as many problems as I would have if I'd have just tried to do it straight out of the box without learning anything. I also got a response from GRT Observatory. 
to say that they like to process old data and learn new image processing techniques. What I like about that is, and we've already touched on this a little bit, um, I use Photoshop to process my images and Photoshop is a huge bit of software. There is loads to learn. I don't think anyone could ever know everything about Photoshop because it is massive. Um, but there's loads of other software out there. I know a lot of people in astrophotography absolutely rave about PixInsight. I've never used it. I've seen some videos about it, never used it. Um, but it might be that uh, when it's cloudy, you might just try using some different image processing software and um, compare the two, see which is better, see what you prefer. Um, but never stop learning, I think is the key there. And if you're looking for more inspiration to keep interested in astrophotography while it's cloudy, go ahead and click into this video right here, which is the last imaging session that I did on my channel. And that was photographing the Leo triplet, which feels like an absolute lifetime ago now. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.